What is up, Undroppables Nation? I'm your host, Josh Lee, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful Saturday. Um, and what better way to spend our Saturday afternoon than doing a best ball mania draft? So I know I took a little bit longer yesterday to actually get the stream going. So we're just going to jump right into it, just straight into the draft. So let's let's go. Let's just go ahead and do this. Um, hold on. Let's let, let's see. Let me see if I can fix this so that we share my entire screen so I can show you as I switch between tabs. Um, so here we go. Let's just jump straight into it. Um, I promised that I would talk through kind of the important principles that you should be thinking through while you're in your drafts, especially your best ball mania drafts. Um, so let's just jump right into it and I'll just talk through it as we uh, wait for the draft room to fill. So um, there are five principles that I always think about whenever I am in one of these drafts. Um, the first thing that's always top of mind for me is stacking um, because stacking is super, super important for these extremely large field tournaments um, because all of the money is at the, is at the top. Um, I can just go ahead and show you exactly like what the, the prize breakdown looks like. So we can see, uh, I can't expand it anymore. Um, the top 10 places was like $5 million of the 15. So 33% of the pool goes to the top 10 in best ball mania out of 677,000 entries. That's a super, super tiny amount, tiny percentage of the pool that ends up winning a lot of money. Um, so you want to maximize your chances to finish in that top 10. And the best way to do that is by stacking. Um, so what does stacking mean? Uh, stacking is basically drafting players on the same team. So like if I were to draft Justin Jefferson first overall, I'm going to be targeting Kirk Cousins later in my draft because the probability that they both have a spike week, meaning they both put up a lot of points in the playoffs is much higher than if I were to get an uncorrelated player. So if I got Justin Jefferson, my quarterback was like Justin Herbert. If Justin Jefferson scores 30 points in week 17, there is a much higher probability that Kirk Cousins scores 20 plus points versus Justin Herbert scoring 20 plus points. Because yes, Justin Herbert's a fantastic player. But the fact that Justin Jefferson is already scoring 30 plus points, that means Kirk Cousins has to be throwing him the ball. Kirk Cousins has to be scoring those touchdowns as well. And so we get basically double counted for a Justin Jefferson touchdown because we also get a Kirk Cousins touchdown. Um, so just like for the probability of outcomes, we want as many players on the same team in week 17. Actually, specifically, we want as many players in the same game in week 17. Uh, it's a little bit like DFS where – you can win an entire slate by picking a ton of players from one singular game. Uh, take the Seahawks and the Lions game from 2021. The ending score of that game was like 51 to 34 or something like that. Something crazy uh, where there were just a ton of touchdowns scored in that game. If you had players in that game, you won best ball mania. That's why Amon Ross St. Brown, Rashad Penny were the, lead, were the best ball mania winners. That's why Liam Murphy was able to take down best ball mania two was because he had Amon Ross St. Brown, Rashad Penny, both go for 30-plus in that game. They were correlated so heavily because they were playing in the same game. That game was high scoring. And when one team scores a lot of points, that forces the other team to score a lot of points. The Seahawks were scoring a ton of points running the ball, so the Lions were throwing the ball a ton to try to keep up. That's why Amon Ross St. Brown popped off for so many points. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of variables that we can't really – account for that far out in time, but we can do our best to maximize our chances in that week 17. Another thing. So that, that's the first principle stacking. Um, if there's any questions like feel free to drop them into the chat. Um, but the second principle that we really try to focus on is ADP value. That's why we're doing drafts this early in the best ball season. That's why we're doing these drafts in May. Um, it's because, there's a lot of guys on the board that are just like 
super, super far down the board that where they shouldn't be. Um, so we're trying to draft these players before they rise up in value through training camp, through the off season, through hype trains. Um, and a lot of the rookies right now are pushed super, super far down the board. So I'm trying to draft as many of those rookies as possible before they start to rise and uh, rise in value uh, by a lot. I'm um, sorry, one second really quick. So good thing this draft hasn't filled yet because I'm supposed to be starting up my draft. So I am in a, uh, here we go. They were, uh, we just started our rookie draft. I'm in the 103. I also traded for the 106. Um, so we'll keep tabs on that. But we're focusing on the best one mini draft. Let's let's win this thing. Let's take this down. I'm um, sorry. Back to ADP value. Why is it important? The top teams are the are the teams that were able to draft players early in the off season before they rose in value. So you're able to get more unique builds. Where like last year, like take Damian Pierce for example. Damian Pierce, before the, the hype train popped him up to like the sixth round, he was going in like the 11th, 12th round. So you're able to stack, like basically construct teams where Damian Pierce is your RB4 or RB5 um, rather than being like your RB1 or RB2. Um, so it's it's those discrepancies that kind of push your chances of winning best ball mania way, way up. Um, so that's, that's important. Um, the third principle, which I follow, is roster construction. Um, last year, zero RB was king. Hayden Winks put out a really, really great uh, visualization that showed how powerful it was to wait on your running backs. So the chart that he showed, um, which I can share, retweet on on my on my Twitter. Um, you can follow me at Joshua J Hyun. Uh, J Hyun spelled as J A E H Y U N. Um, the running backs, the, the, the reason it was optimal to draft running backs, not until the eighth round, because like you're able to draft all of these elite players. You're able to draft all these elite receivers, all these elite quarterbacks while you wait on your running backs. And there are running backs last year that you could find in the eighth, ninth, tenth round that made that strategy viable. Um, I think that's probably the most, that was my input, most important takeaway was yes, last year, zero RB was king. You could wait until the eighth round to draft your first running back. But the only reason that that was a thing was because you could find Josh Jacobs, Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard way back in the draft. And those all three of those guys finished as RB1s. So rather than spending your early picks on guys like a Nick Chubb, a Travis Etienne, Saquon Barkley, yes, all those guys were great. They finished in uh, – they were all three of them were, were RB1s. But you had to spend – a lot of draft capital to acquire those guys. You can wait to the eighth, ninth, 10th round to draft the guys like Josh Jacobs, Ramondre Stevenson, and Tony Pollard. So my biggest thing this season is I'm trying to identify in the drafts, the Josh Jacobs, the Ramondre Stevenson, the Tony Pollard's of this year and see which strategies are going to be most viable in best ball mania this year. Um, because every single year things change this year. I've noticed quarterbacks are pushed way up the board, like the ADPs on these quarterbacks. Look at this, Josh Allen, ADP, 18.2. Patrick Mahomes, 18.6. Jalen Hurts, 18.9. All three going in the second round. That's high. That's way higher than they were last year. Josh Allen was QB1 last, or was the ADP QB1 last year. And you could take him in the third, end of the third, beginning of the fourth. If you got lucky, you get him in the beginning of the fourth. But typically around the, the third, end, uh, middle third, end of third round, these quarterbacks are pushed way up the board. People are learning. People are smart. Markets are becoming more efficient where it's harder to identify the players that you should be taking. Um, so we need to adjust. That's why strategies are going to change year to year. And we have to stay on top of these strategies. It's, it's good to be able to analyze the data from last year, but we don't want to take the data from last year and apply the lessons one-to-one -to, -one to this year because you got to be flexible. You have to, you have to be able to learn from what happened last year and how the markets are moving for this year. That's kind of how I see these, these drafts is it's a market. It's a market of players. Um, all these guys values are constantly changing. Um, so we got to find the areas where players are undervalued. And I think that that's the most important. We got to find the undervalued players. And that's why I've been working on building out these best ball models uh, by analyzing all the data from previous seasons. 
Um, and right now I've kind of went down that rabbit hole for a best ball data bowl. Um, and I am looking into how I can best predict the fantasy production from players this season. Okay. I'm in the 12th spot. This is really interesting. I actually just did a uh, DraftKings best ball draft um, out of the 12th spot. So we'll see how the draft falls to me. Um, okay. If AJ Brown falls to us, I will take AJ Brown. Um, I don't think he's going to get to us though. Yeah. He does not fall to us. Maybe we'll start it with like a Devonte CD. I started my DraftKings draft out the same way. Okay. Devonte does not fall to us. Uh, how do we want to do this? Um, I like CD lamb as our wide receiver one. Let's go ahead and hit the draft button on CD lamb. Um, we're going to wait on running back because there are a lot of really strong running backs later in the draft. Let's go CD. Uh, all right. I don't have too much Garrett Wilson. Let me, uh, I, I talked about this in the last stream. Uh, I said, I didn't know how much Garrett Wilson I'm going to have uh, at the end of the first round, but screw it. We'll go Garrett CD lamb, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson should be a stud this year. Um, he absolutely popped off last year and he just added Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. Um, and this allows us some, some unique stacks, which, which I haven't really been targeting. Um, so we're going to go for the Garrett Wilson, Aaron Rodgers stack. We're going to go for the CD lamb, Dak Prescott stack. Um, and then we'll see how this draft plays out for us. Um, okay. Oh, last thing, last principle. So I went through the four principles. Let me go over those again, real quick, just to recap. Stacking. That's why I just talked about it. I want to get Dak Prescott to stack with CeeDee Lamb. I want to get Aaron Rodgers to stack with Garrett Wilson. Um, ADP value. Uh, not really applicable in the first round because I don't expect these guys to rise or fall too much. Um, they're studs. They're going to continue to be studs. They should. They, I think they're priced pretty well. Um, roster construction. Big thing with roster construction. Uh, last year, uh, we said should wait until the eighth round to draft the first running back. While I don't think that's going to apply one-to-one this year, I think the general principle of waiting on running backs still applies uh, because you need you, you need to start three wide receivers and two running backs every single week. That just naturally should mean that receivers are more valuable because you need to start more of them. Um, so like take uh, I, I saw I saw a tweet from I can't remember who it was from, but basically wide receivers this year are more expensive than running backs on average. And I think that that is indicative of the market being mispriced previously where running backs were going before wide receivers on average when that should have never been the case. So now markets are more efficient and the wide receivers are priced correctly. And that shouldn't necessarily change our, uh, the way that we're drafting too much because like we shouldn't be taking all of the running backs now because like, Oh, running backs are cheaper. Let me just draft a bunch of them early. No, you should be still taking your, as many elite receivers as possible. Um, and I think this just uh, like makes the zero RB strategy even more viable because running backs are being pushed further down the board. So you can draft as many elite receivers as possible and then draft those running backs. Um, and you can get more elite running backs when you're waiting. So we'll, we'll, we'll see who falls to us, but, um, so it's been sliding a little bit. Uh, there's no, he falls to me. Um, I'm in the nine, nine spot. Let's see. Okay. We have Dallas, New York jets. Uh, we could look at an NFC East stack or an AFC East stack. Uh, Brees Hall slide sus. That'd be pretty interesting. Ramondre slide sus. I'm a big fan of Jameer Gibbs at ADP right now. So talked about roster construction or, or and sorry, not roster construction, but talked about ADP value a ton. Jameer Gibbs is one of those guys which I'm a big fan of him for his ADP value because he's a first round running back getting drafted at the third, three, four turn. Um, I don't think that that should be the case. Every single year previously, we've seen these first round running backs typically push up the board and Bijan Robinson is going as a top eight pick. Um, so Bijan Robinson and Jameer Gibbs should probably be priced a little bit closer to each other than they are right now. Um, so we'll see how the draft falls for us, but I think I like Jameer Gibbs here at the three, four turn. uh if dk falls to us we'll take dk if calvin ridley falls to us we'll probably take calvin ridley uh just so we could also focus on the jacksonville stacks because i am a big fan of jacksonville this year uh lost to jacksonville lost to the chiefs in the playoffs 
Um, and they, they're right there. Doug Peterson has really transformed this team. Um, they're looking very, very good to uh, kind of continue to be a very, very strong franchise for, for many years to come. Is this guy going to auto-draft DK? Feels like, yeah, it looks like he is. Okay. So if this guy doesn't take Ridley, we'll go ahead and take Rid- uh, Marty Cooper. I'm a big fan of Amari Cooper this year, too. Um, we'll see. We're going to take a receiver and Jameer Gibbs here, unless this guy takes Jameer Gibbs. But he already has a running back, so that wouldn't be optimal. Yeah, he took Amari. Okay. Um, okay, okay. We'll pro. Uh, I really like Mark Andrews this year, too. Lamar already got taken, but that might not matter. Uh, thirty two point three. Let me get Mark Andrews. Big fan of Mark Andrews. We need elite tight end. Um, and I guess since we're we're already focusing on stacking Dallas and New York Jets, so we can stray away from Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley might slide in ADP value. I don't see him rising any more than he already is. I love Calvin Ridley, but uh, we're gonna avoid him in this draft. We'll go Jameer Gibbs, Mark Andrews. Um. So haven't gone as wide receiver heavy as I did in the last underdog draft, but we got our elite tight end in Mark Andrews, um, and we're not going to be able to stack him with uh, Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson went at 3-2. Um, Lamar Jackson probably will continue to creep up boards. I'm, I, I, I love Lamar Jackson. I think that he's going to be a great fantasy quarterback this year. Um has, with the addition of Todd Monken, um, that's really going to transform that Baltimore offense. Todd Monken really, really was the driving force for that Georgia offense for the past two years. I mean, he got it done with freaking Setson Bennett as his quarterback. Um, and who did he design the offense around? The best athlete in that on that Georgia team in Brock Bowers. And Brock Bowers, uh, parallel to the NFL, Mark Andrews. So I think this this Baltimore offense is really going to transform into being a lot of pass heavy. And Mark Andrews is going to be that featured weapon. Um, so getting him in the third round when Travis Kelsey is going in the first. Mark Andrews was tight end one two years ago. Give me all the Mark Andrews. Uh, and let me talk about Jameer Gibbs a little bit. Jameer Gibbs is a going to be a PPR machine. Um, with Jamison Williams suspended in the first six weeks, they just – did you see how excited that Detroit – draft room was in getting Jameer Gibbs. They're freaking pounding the table, like super, super hype that they got Jameer Gibbs. And I'm just as hype as they are because Jameer Gibbs should be an absolute stud this year. Um, he's going to be absolute stud for uh, many years to come. So I'm, I'm happy getting Jameer Gibbs here as my fourth pick um, at four one. So let's, let's get it. I'm, I'm loving this build so far. Um, we're going to have to start focusing on those stacks, but we're just building out our team with studs to begin with. Uh, we don't need to focus too much on stacking with our first four or five picks, but as the draft builds out, we're going to want to stack as many players as possible. Um, another thing, one thing we like to focus on is right now the NFL schedule isn't out. So we don't know who those playoff matchups are going to be. The way that we can try to maximize our probability to get week 17 game stacks early on before we have the schedule out is by taking players in the same division. It's more likely than not that those week 17 games are going to be divisional games. Uh, the NFL likes to schedule it out where the end of season matchups are super division focused because teams are fighting for playoff spots. So we're going to want to focus our attention to the picks where we can uh, maximize the probability that uh, we have a game stack. So, like, for Dallas, for example, I want to focus on NFC East teams. Uh, the Jets, I want to focus on AFC East teams. Baltimore, NFC North teams. Detroit, NFC North. AFC North, NFC North. So, uh, I probably want to get another receiver. I don't love the receivers in this range. Uh, Trevor. Maybe I'll go a Dak Rogers. 2QB. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Dak Rogers for my two quarterbacks. Um, we're not going to we're not going to be able to get any of these elite quarterbacks up here. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. I do really like Aaron Jones um, because Aaron Jones is a freaking stud. Um, I could also get J.K. Dobbins to get the Mark Andrews J.K. Dobbins stack. Uh. I have a lot of JSN already, but maybe I'll get Brandon Ayuk. 
I know it doesn't stack up with anyone that I already have, but Brandon Ayuk is a stud. He shouldn't be going this late. Brandon Ayuk is one of the best receivers in the league. Ah, oh, Jones just went. So maybe I go J.K. Dobbins, Brandon Ayuk. To get the Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins stack. I'm a big fan of J.K. Dobbins. All right, let me let me get J.K. Dobbins. Um, get my RB two, and let me get my wide receiver three. Okay, I'm liking the team so far. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins, C.D. Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Mark Andrews. We have the Baltimore stacks. Um, we obviously couldn't get Lamar Jackson just because he went a little bit too early for us, but I'm liking our team so far. Um, the only other guy I would have considered was Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, just because Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Jigba is a freaking stud. But I think we're going to go with Brandon Ayuk in this draft just for uh, because we dra- we've already drafted so much Jackson Smith and Jigba, and because we don't have any right now. But am I on the am I on the clock in here? Bijan Bryce Young. I'll probably go CJ Stroud, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to it for a little bit. One draft at a time. We're going to focus on this one today. Or not today. For 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 the next hour and a half because we're going to do this one and then we're probably going to hop straight into another best ball draft. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba sliding a little bit. Uh, there's no way he falls 20 more picks, but um, we'll see who continues to slide. We we'll, we'll, might be able to get some... So it looks like our NFC North is stacking out the most. Um, we could even go like a, we could focus on like Baltimore, Cleveland, Baltimore, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cincinnati. So if like a Joe Mixon slides, never mind, he just went. Um, Detroit, we could even focus on like a Jamison Williams later in the draft. Um, we'll see how this plays out. Tyler Lockett. Uh, did I get cut off when I was? Yeah, I was uh, recapping. Okay. Okay. I saw him even talked about the fifth principle. So four principles so far. Stacking. Already covered that. Roster construction. Already covered that. ADP value. Already covered that. Um, and undervalued players. Um, have kind of covered that. Uh, I think J.K. Dobbins is one of those undervalued players. Um, J.K. Dobbins is a freaking stud. And... He's going at pick 60, ADP of 59.6. That is kind of wild, especially because we know the Baltimore offense loves to run the ball so much. Uh, Maybe that's going to change up a little bit with Todd Monken as the coordinator, but J.K. Dobbins is their RB1. Um, He was an absolute stud as a rookie, put up, what, like 10 touchdowns on like 150 carries, something like that. Like that's that's insane. Um, So hopefully that touchdown efficiency comes back. I expect Baltimore to be a good solid offense this year uh, with Lamar Jackson at the helm. So I'm excited to see what they can do this year. Um, we'll see who falls to us. Honestly, if Deshaun Watson slides to us, where's Dak Prescott? If Dak Prescott's down there. We might take Dak Prescott at our next pick. What are we? 84. Dak Prescott's at 86.5. Yeah, we're going to take Dak Prescott at our next pick if he is there. If he is not, we'll we'll see what's available to us. I actually also really like Deontay jo- Never mind. Deontay Johnson just got taken. Um, Deontay Johnson is one of those undervalued players, guys. Um, so like I was looking, so one of the most powerful variables in my current model to identify undervalued players is their fantasy production from two years ago. So some guys, which I'm really targeting in drafts this year is like a Debo Samuel. It's a Deontay Johnson. It's a Mike Evans. It's a DK Metcalf, who was also good last year. Keenan Allen, Chris Godwin, even a Hunter Renfro late in drafts, uh, Brandon Cooks, honestly, too. Like the, these guys, like can pop off. These guys can put up great fantasy production. I'll even start looking for guys like uh, Joe Mixon. He's falling super, super hard. Leonard Fournette. He's going to sign somewhere. I'll take him late in the draft. Zeke. He's going to sign somewhere too. I'll take him late in the draft. James Conner is late. Cordero is a little bit interesting. I don't know how they're going to use Cordero. I would take Cordero, but uh, we'll see how the draft falls out to us. I'll probably take more Cordero on teams where I already have Atlanta stacks. Um, because I really like what Atlanta's doing over there, but but we'll see. Uh, okay, I just talked about Brandon Cooks. We might go Dak Brandon Cooks uh, just to get more Dallas. Because there's no Baltimore Cats here, right? No Baltimore, Baltimore. Who else do I have? Jets. Uh, any Jets players in this range? AFC East, Detroit. No, I don't want to stack Jameer with Demont. 
Baltimore, no Baltimore guys. Jets, San Francisco. I don't see any San Francisco. Damn, Cooks just went. Okay, that's okay. I'm okay with letting Cooks uh, uh, fall out right there. We'll definitely take Dak. Dak was our number one quarterback option. Dak is our QB1. Um, and then we'll hope that Rogers slides to us at our next pick. But we're going to go Dak. We'll probably go Dak Jahan. Just because Jahan Dotson, we could focus on like some Sam Howell stacks later in the draft. Um, Jahan Dotson. Uh, Qu- I really like Quentin Johnston too. But I'll probably take Jahan Dotson for the Dallas-Washington game potential late in the season. I think that that's, that's our pick probably. Michael Thomas, Cortland Sutton, Zay Flowers. Nah. Oh, there's a Zay Flowers down here too. I'd rather have John. John's also a first round receiver. Um, Zay Flowers, pro- he, he's probably going to be a stud this year too. Um, but Jahan Dotson is just a little bit more intriguing because there's that Dallas stack uh, paired with Washington. Um, maybe we'll focus on getting like a Sam Howell, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson later in the draft. Um, maybe I should have gone Zay Flowers here. Um, Zay Flowers was one, one of the other guys I was, I was uh, considering, but I like my Jahan Dotson pick. Um, uh because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a commanders fan so got gotta love Jahan Dotson there uh he was great last year when he was healthy um and he he's a stud I I'm a big fan of Jahan Dotson all right uh if they fall to us we're gonna focus on like a Jamison Williams later at we're at pick 108 we'll probably go Jamison Williams Aaron Rodgers as our top two guys uh Odell is this high do I take Odell? I'm, I'm considering it just because I have all of these Baltimore players. Where was Odell's fantasy production two years ago? Odell two years ago put up 129. Oh yeah, he he was with the Rams. Did win this. He looked pretty good two years ago. Mm. We'll see. We'll see how it falls out to us. If Zay somehow makes it to us, that'd be insane. I don't think he does, but that would be insane. Hmm. We'll see. I'm liking our draft so far. I'm liking our draft a lot. Jameer Gibbs. So for the audio listeners, Dak Prescott at quarterback. Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins as our running backs. Our wide receiver room is CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Jahan Dotson. Our tight end is Mark Andrews. I'm really liking our team so far. Uh, Zay Flowers just got to take a pick 98. Oh, this guy is Lamar. Okay, the running backs are kind of going off the board now. If Sharp falls to us, I'll take Sharp. Honestly, even if Madison falls to us, I'll take Madison. Um, Madison just got taken. If Rodgers falls to us, we would definitely take Rodgers, stack him with Garrett Wilson. That makes some uh, NFC, AFC East stacks a little bit more viable for us. Let me get Sharp and Rodgers. Come on. Ooh, if Rashad Bateman falls to us, more Baltimore stacks, that'd be huge. All right, that, that, there's a decision there. If uh, all three of those guys fall to us, we're, we're going to have to make a decision on who we want to take. I'm a big fan of Rashad Bateman bounce back season. Big fan of Rashad Bateman. Another first round wide receiver. I love my first round receivers. All, all my receivers on this team are first round wide receivers. CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Jahan Dotson. Whew. A first round running back. It's funny. My, my quarterback is my lowest drafted player. Dak went in what, the fifth? It's wild. Kirk Cousins. Okay. Oh, this guy doesn't have Jefferson. What's he taking Kirk Cousins for? Oh, he's Hawk. Okay. AJ Brown, Amon Rod, DK Ridley. That's a pretty strong receiver room. Danny Dimes just went. Oh, they both fell to me. Okay. This is this is really interesting here. 
Um, ooh, this is really, really interesting. Who do I take? Uh, let me go Sharp first, just because I didn't expect Sharp to to slide this far. Um, and Sharp is a good player. Um, let me go ahead and get Sharp. And then now we're deciding between Rodgers and Bateman. Rodgers for the Jet stack or Bateman for the Baltimore stack. I, I'm going to have a lot of Bateman. So, and there's a chance that he might continue to slide down boards or he could rise too. Rodgers could rise too, though. This is a tough spot. Let me go Rodgers. Just because I want that that Jets, uh, that Rodgers, Garrett Wilson stack. And since I take Rodgers here, I don't need to take three quarterbacks. Um, having two mid-tier quarterbacks, like a Rodgers, Dak, um, like a Kirk Cousins and a Kirk Cousins and Tua, um, so guys who are like priced pretty well, um, but who have like elite upside, like Dak Prescott has elite upside. Aaron Rodgers has elite upside. Uh, even Tua has elite upside with his, with his receivers. Um, Anthony Richardson has elite upside just because of his rushing ability, but don't know how I feel about him as an eighth round uh, best ball mania pick just because there's so much risk tied into him. He should put up decent points, but we'll see what, whoa, how that plays out. Um, Kirk Cousins has elite upside with the Justin Jefferson uh jordan addison receiver room danny dimes i hate to say it but he has a lead upside with his rushing ability um so we'll see how this how this continues to shake out um i think how i'm gonna want to play it is probably go another uh, yeah i'm just gonna focus on receivers and running backs now um so we're gonna go rashad bateman if he falls to us a chain if he falls to us P. Ryan, if he falls to us, I like all three of those guys. Um, and then would even take like a Tyler Boyd for like a Cincinnati Baltimore stack for a game uh, week 17. Um, P. Ryan just went. Would love a Antonio Gibson with the Jahan Dotson stack uh, just for that Dallas Washington week 17 matchup. That'd be a ton of fun. Bateman just goes. Bateman fell to 119 from 106. Is this the Lamar? Yep, this is the Lamar owner. So how have we played out, played this out so far? We went CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Mark Andrews, Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins, Brandon Ayuk, Dak Prescott, Jahan Dotson, Zach Charbonnet, Aaron Rodgers. My riskiest pick so far has probably been Zach Charbonnet. Um, just because he's a rookie running back in the Seattle backfield behind Kenneth Walker. Um, but I think I'm going to have a decent amount of Kenneth Walker uh, this year because Kenneth Walker has fallen like two and a half rounds. So I'll have a decent amount of Kenneth Walker. Um, and then just as a hedge against that, I'll have some Zach Charbonnet as well. Because who, if one of those running backs goes down, the other one immediately becomes a bell cow. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, fire truck in the background, but um, looks like one's going by right now. A chain. Okay. Let's go Gibson and Boyd if he's there. Oh, the receivers are getting kind of gross. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna need seven receivers on this team just because they're they're getting pretty gross down here. Uh, Zay Jones. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, back to the five principles because all right, let me make my picks. Then we'll, then we'll go into the five principles. Uh, because I ha I still haven't given away that, that fifth principle yet. Um, let's see. Uh, hopefully Gibson falls to us. That'd be huge at pick 11-12. Gibson at 11-12 would be very, very nice. I don't know which receiver I'd want to take with him. I mean, where did, where, where did JMO go? What? Where's Jameson Williams? Okay, he went in the eighth round. That's still really high for him. I don't want to take Jameson Williams in the eighth round. He'll probably continue to slide this offseason uh, just because he's facing that. Ah, Gibson just went. Good pick, NF42. Uh, yeah, this guy This guy is a good team. This would probably be my main competitor in this league with the A.J. Brown, Amara, D.K. Metcalf, Calvin Ridley. 
Um, but I like our team too. We got Jameer. He ain't got no Jameer. Let's go. I do like Kendra down here too. This is a tough spot though. Tough spot for sure. Um, definitely going to want to go receiver here. I like Dubs. Dubs, Dobbs, however you say it. I like Thielen too, but Thielen's a little bit risky. I think we'll go Romeo Dobbs just because like there's a chance that Dobbs is the target leader in Green Bay. Um, just because he was pretty good when healthy. He put up 425 as a as a rookie. So we'll take Dobbs there. Um, and then we'll probably want to go back to the running back well. This is tough. This is tough. Sign Thielen. Screw it. Give me Thielen. Um, Thielen is still a pretty good receiver. And Carol, what, what was Thielen's contract this year? Got a three year, $25 million contract? Ooh. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, I'm happy with Thielen then. Uh, he, he, there's a real chance that he's the wide receiver one for the Carolina Panthers. Um, Bryce Young is going to need to throw to somebody. They, the Panthers have completely revamped their receiver room. It is now Thielen, DJ Chark, and Jonathan Mingo. Um, and I think Thielen is probably the best receiver in that room. Uh, Thielen's great at getting separation. He'll be Bryce Young's best friend. Um, so I, I, I think Thielen should, should get some solid work this year. Um, what is this? Oh, he had 113 recessions back in 2018. All right, the past two years, been putting up about 70 with Justin Jefferson. Um, I like him for about 80 to 85 receptions this year, uh, as long as he stays healthy. Health is going to be the biggest concern for him, but I, I, I like him to stay healthy this year. Uh, and okay, let, let, let me let me get into uh, some of the, the the last principle, the fifth principle. So just to recap, the first four are. Did not want that to pop up there. How do I get it to go back? Come on. Go back here. Nope. Okay. Whatever. Um, we'll figure that out in a little bit. But, okay. Uh, the four principles are stacking. Special Week 17 game stacking. Um, roster construction. Uh, we want to get – want to generally wait on running backs and draft more receivers than running backs. Uh the type of builds I usually go for are like a two six seven two. Uh, I don't, does that add up to eighteen? Eight fifteen. Two six seven three, three six seven two, two five eight three. Just like some combination where you have like slightly more receivers than running backs. You have two or three quarterbacks and tight ends, depending on how much draft capital you allocate to the position. Um, my room is looking like two quarterbacks, two tight ends, maybe because I've taken. Uh, two middling quarterbacks and one elite tight end. We'll probably go two tight ends, uh, two quarterbacks. Um, just because if if I'm if my third quarterback is putting up points and Dak and Aaron Rodgers aren't, I'm probably not going to win Best Ball Mania. So we're building our team as if we're right. So Dallas and Jets, we're betting on that those offenses are going to be good. We're betting on CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson are going to be the uh, – alphas in that offense and earn a ton of targets. Uh, so I like those bets right now. Um, we'll see how this room continues to shake out. We're up in eight picks. Um, what else? What, what were the other ones? Um, I have it up. Uh, undervalued players. Zach Charbonnet, I think, is a little bit undervalued going this far down. Thielen Dobbs, uh, maybe slightly undervalued just because they're so far down the boards. Uh, and they both have the potential to be the target leaders in those offenses. Um, and then the fifth and most important, in my opinion, to winning these best ball manias is unique builds, uniqueness, unique players. Um, it's funny, Liam Murphy, what, two years ago, he, one of his contributing players in week 17 was Jeff Driscoll. I think Liam Murphy was the only player to draft Jeff Driscoll and he had a contribution in week 17. That's crazy. Uh, this past year, if you had Jarek McKinnon, who was being drafted in the, the last rounds, basically, though, like 15 of those teams were like 
10 or eight of the top 10 teams had Jarek McKinnon on their team. And Jarek McKinnon was a low owned, low drafted player. So by having low drafted players, it gives you leverage on the rest of the field. That's why in my later rounds, I'm going to be focusing on players who I think can really rise in terms of contributing in the last few weeks of the season uh, to putting up big points. So we'll, we'll, we'll see who we can get later in the draft. I think the way that I'm going to draft this is I'm going to go. Uh, ooh, Roshan and Kendrick both fell. Do I have any Chicago correlation? Not really. New Orleans correlation? Not really. I like Zeke down here because I think there's a pretty big chance Zeke resigns and goes right back to Dallas. He, he's going to get carried somewhere. And let me get a Kendra Miller just because I'm a big fan of Kendra Miller. He should probably be one of those guys that continues to rise up draft boards. He got drafted in the third round, got solid draft capital. Um, Alvin Kamara has a looming suspension. There is a big chance that Alvin Kamara gets suspended a minimum of six games, I want to say. Um, the video came out where a, he looks like he's kicking some dude who's already down. Uh, he has a court date already set. Um, and the NFL hasn't made any actions yet, but there's a real chance that Kendra Miller, or not Kendra, sorry, Alvin Kamara faces a real suspension. That would boost Kendra Miller's ability to see the field early in the season. And if he starts contributing, who says that he doesn't run away with the job? I know there's Jamal Williams there. Jamal Williams is a very, very solid player. But Jamal Williams isn't the caliber of player that Kendrick Miller is. Kendrick, Jamal Williams, he's gritty. He does the tough He does the tough things. He runs in between tackles, gets that one yard that you need. But Kendrick Miller is, in my opinion, I think Kendrick Miller is a solid pass catcher. Um, I know he didn't. he wasn't used that much at TCU as a pass catcher. I think his target share was only like 5%. But whenever he was called upon to catch the football, he he has good hands. He looked he look natural catching the football, and he would always turn up field, and, and he would make big plays. So I like Kendra Miller in this New Orleans offense. I like, uh, I like the fact that I have three rookie running backs who I was really high on uh, coming into the season, and all of them got day one or day two draft capital. So they're going to be used by their teams. Um, and those backfields are a little bit ambiguous. Detroit, um, there's uh, David Montgomery there. David Montgomery will probably see the one to two down grinder uh, workload. And Jameer Gibbs is going to get those valuable targets. Jameer Gibbs is going to be used as a pass catcher. Give me all those targets. Zach Charbonnet. Kenneth Walker isn't really known as a pass catcher. Uh, coming out of college, uh, one of the biggest knocks against him was that he rarely caught passes. I know Michigan State rarely used running backs to catch passes. But still, he didn't. Kenneth Walker didn't catch many passes last season. Zach Charbonnet has been known to be a solid pass catcher. So I expect Zach Charbonnet to really take over that third down role. He had a 15% target share last year at UCLA, uh, actually 15% career target share in college. So uh, I expect Pete Carroll to use Zach Charbonnet as a pass catcher. So he will get that workload. Um, Kendra Miller, again, another guy who is a solid pass catcher. I expect him to be in there on third downs. He's a great uh, pass blocker as well. I know Jamal Williams is a phenomenal pass blocker just because of his grittiness, but I like Kendrick Miller to see the field. Um, and I expect him to be one of those guys who's going to be an ADP value. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to rise throughout the offseason. So I like that I was able to get him in the 14th round. All right. Nico Collins is sliding. Give me Nico if he falls. Are there any more Jets guys? I need Jets, Baltimore, Dallas, Washington. Give me Curtis Samuel. Jets, Baltimore, Dallas. Miko Hardman. That's an interesting one. Give me a little. Oh, Taekwon. Ooh, I'm a big fan of Taekwon. Taekwon Thornton. Miko Collins. Uh. I already have a lot riding on Nico Collins, and I'm not going to stack him because I don't have any. It'd be basically be a naked Nico Collins, and I don't want to have a naked Nico Collins. That just feels gross. Do I have any Denver correlation? Not really. 
Seattle, San Fran. Uh, fifteenth round, Miko. Yeah, give me Miko Hardman. We'll we'll stack him with Rogers. He has that explosive playability where his yak ability is insane. Get him in open space, and he should be pretty dangerous. Um, I have seven receivers already. Uh. I like Lenny down here too. Screw it. Give me Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette, like he, like this guy, like he's going to get signed somewhere. Give me all of the Leonard Fournette. He's going to get signed somewhere. He's going to rise up boards. I got both Leonard Fournette and Zeke Elliott. One of the things that my model likes is production from two years ago. Um, and who was RB5 and RB6 two years ago? Leonard Fournette, Ezekiel Elliott. These guys are going to get work somewhere. I know they didn't look great last year. I know that. But one of the most important things in the NFL is just experience. Experience just being on the field. Leonard Fournette is going to be on the field somewhere. I don't know where, but he's going to be somewhere. Um, let me see if there's any news on these guys. Cowboys. <laughs> that'd be pr- that would be insane if, if I just lucked into a Leonard Fournette Dallas stack. Ezekiel Elliott. Buccaneers link to them. Uh, yeah, so like these guys, I really like those two players this far down in the drafts. I'm good on running backs now. Um, and I'm a big fan of my running back room. It's it's pretty solid. Got a solid quarterback room, solid running back room. All right, this is when we get into the uniqueness. So our last two picks, 17, 12, and 18, 1, we're going to be drafting guys that aren't drafted that much. We're going to be drafting guys that are low owned. Um, if Marvin Mims or Taekwon falls to us, we're going to draft one of those two dudes. But our last pick is going to be unique build. I think it's going to be tight end. Um, we could get a Jake Ferguson. We could get a Shoemaker. Luke Shoemaker. I know there's even like a Hendershot. In Hendershot, there's like a Conklin. Oh, Conklin got taken. Uh. Who's who's first? In, who's on the death chart? Six five, two hundred fifty pounds. All right, I like that he's older. Elite athleticism. He's 19.86 Raz. Whoo. All right. Let me get Shoemaker. Let me get Shoemaker. Um, Shoemaker as our second tight end for a unique build. Give that all the way to me. Uh, hopefully, Taekwon falls. So then we have some New York Jets, New England Patriots week 17 uh, potential. That'd be pretty spicy. Um, and then I would take Shoemaker. Taekwon and Shoemaker, come on. Give them to me. Give them to me. Give them to me. Jake Ferguson, that's fine. You can have your Jake Ferguson. Give me Shoemaker. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Taekwon and Shoemaker, our last two picks. All right, and there's our team. Let's go. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this team. Dak, Rodgers. All right, so recap for the audio listeners. Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers, Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins, Zach Charbonnet, Ezekiel Elliott, Kendra Miller, Leonard Fournette, CeeDee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Jahan Dotson, Romeo Dubs, Adam Thielen, Miko Hardman, Tyquan Thornton, Mark Andrews, and Luke Shoemaker. Uh, I like this build. I like this team. Six, uh, two quarterback, six running back, eight wide receiver, two tight end. Um, and yeah, this is, this is looking like a force of the team. I'm, I'm liking what we have over here. Um, and I think we're going to jump just straight into another best ball mania draft. 
because why not? Why not on this fine, beautiful Saturday morning? Uh, yes. Okay, we're still on the clock. Let's let's check my messages, see if any trade offers have come in. Okay, so Bryce Young and Bijan Robinson just went off the board. Guys, are you saying that Josh Bryce should break the line too? Um. <laughs> uh sorry um I, I'm, I'm in trade negotiations right now for i, I think i like a rich um Uh, let's see let's see does anyone want to trade into 103 i don't know i don't know let's see let's see so i think i take richardson here right just because of his upside um Let's see if uh, if anybody wants to trade into this pick. Do we take a rich? Do we take a rich and let Stroud fall? Huh. Let me let me let me text. Let me text Chalk. Let's let's see what Chalk has to say. Let me send him my team. Do I go A Rich just for the value? Or do I go Stroud for because I think Stroud's a dog? Uh, let's see. Okay. So does, do I trade out? Let's see. What, what are the picks does Dave have? Dave has, oh, he has 110, 112. Oh, uh, there's 110, 112. Let's see. Where's Dave at? Oh, he doesn't have any second round picks. Hmm. Let me see what I can get from Dave. Can I get any running backs? Uh, sorry, y'all. I know, uh, this is a little bit of a derailment from what we initially thought. Okay. Well, we're back in the, in the best ball draft. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to make my league mates wait on the clock a little bit longer. Um, but okay. We got one Oh three. Let's go. One Oh three. Oh, I'm hype. Okay. So we get to have a one Oh three on the stream. Let's get it. Hopefully I get Jamar. I would love a Jamar chase team here. Okay. Uh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's go. Um, let, let, let's just take a look at our, our last team. I don't know. We'll, we'll do that at the end. Um, okay. 
So 103 is always a fun spot. Could get JJ. I doubt I get JJ. JJ, Jamar, Christian McCaffrey. Ooh. All right, JJ goes. Let's see what happens. JJ. Izzy, get busy. Who are you going to take, Izzy, get busy? Take McCaffrey. Come on, Izzy, get busy. Take McCaffrey. Give me Jamar. Give me Jamar. Let's go. Come on. Give me Jamar. Give me Jamar. Give me what I desire. Please, please, please. Give me Jamar. Give me Jamar. Damn. All right, we'll take McCaffrey. McCaffrey should be a freaking stud this year. Clear RB1. Give me all of the Christian McCaffrey. Um, this is my, actually my first Christian McCaffrey team. So we'll see how, how this builds out. Uh, maybe we'll go super heavy San Francisco where we get like Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Ayuk, Trey Lance. I actually like that idea. Um, so if, all, if it falls out to me like that, maybe even like a Kittle, just get the whole San Francisco offense. Um, and then who could they play week 17? I can do San Francisco, Seattle, San Francisco, LA Rams. Ooh, if I can get an LA Rams stack, that'd be pretty interesting because I do think Stafford is going to be one of those risers. Who's going to be one of those ADP value risers? The, uh, because Stafford is going to be – Stafford's good. Stafford's freaking good. I, I'm a big fan of Matthew Stafford. Um, I know I'm trying to trade him in that one uh, in this one league, but that's because I'm in like a deep, deep rebuild. But look who was the QB – what, the QB six two years ago? Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford still Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford still Sean McVay. He's going to sling the freaking ball. Maybe I'll get like a Stafford and stack him with like a Puka Nakua. That'd be super hype. Um, who's going to see the Puka Nakua coming? The Puka Nakua, Nakua Week 17 Spike Week. Let's go. I'm all for it. I am all for it. Come on. All right, focusing back on this draft. Sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, let's see. Jazzman takes JT Garrett Wilson. Damn, you lucky boy. JT fell to you. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to want to stack two elite receivers here just because we started off with the – we're going to go here running back in this draft. Um, unless something crazy happens where Eckler or Saquon falls to us, then we can get – just straight uniqueness off the top with like a CMC Eckler would be stupid, uh, would be insane. And I would definitely take that. I would take that happily. Um, but we could go like a McCaffrey with like a Jalen Waddle, Chris Oblave, Devonta Smith, any of those dudes, honestly. Hmm. May 6th. So this NFL schedule comes out in five days. Um, I'm excited for that. Can't wait for it. But let's see. Let's see how the draft room falls. Pollard went over Eckler and Saquon. That's pretty crazy. Tony Paul. Okay, Mahomes just went. The Kelsey guy. Yep. Eckler just went. Okay, I assume Josh Allen to go right here. Yep, I assume Jalen Hurts to go right there. Jalen Hurts. So I'll probably be able to get Waddle. A CMC Waddle start would be pretty wild. If Waddle gets taken... Probably go Olave. Yeah, it hurts. Okay. Don't take Waddle. Damn it. All right. I want a Waddle. Um, do you go Olave or Devante with McCaffrey? Because uh, is there a chance Olave makes it back to us? There's a chance, but it's not high. Give me Devontae Smith. 
Devontae Smith. Um, I'm a big, big fan of Devontae Smith. Uh, I will take all of the Devontae Smith right there. And because who, where's this guy? Where's the Jalen Hurts guy? Oh, the Jalen Hurts guy was after us. I'm um, in the 103. That's right. Yeah, the Jalen Hurts guy was after us. So maybe we could have let uh, Devontae keep sliding and then maybe gotten him here. I'm playing it because, like, there's no way anybody has a Chris Olave uh, stack. So I was hoping, like, maybe I could get, like, Chris Olave here. But this guy looks like he just timed out. So he's probably going to be on auto pick for this pick and he's going to get Chris Olave. Ooh, three running backs go right there. Ooh, I get Chris Olave or T. Higgins. Let's go. Ooh, I like this draft. I like this draft a lot. Let's go. Let's go. Olave or Higgins, I am happy with either one of them. Very happy with either one of them. High pass volume. Decent pass volume, but Devontae Smith is dog. Chris Olave should get a ton of targets this year. Um, so he gets Olave. Yeah, give me Higgins. All right, this is a strong, strong start. McCaffrey, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins. I'm loving it. All right, here we go. For all of the live stream viewers, you can watch me take CJ Stroud. There we go. CJ Stroud at the 103. Give him to me. Uh, Pearlman can deal with Anthony Richardson. Okay, sweet. CJ Stroud, lock it in. Uh, I'm loving that. Okay, back to this draft. All right, we got Cincy, Philly, San Francisco. Um, we'll see how this shakes out, but we could even get like a Burrow. Well, Burrow will probably get taken by the Jamar owner. Where's the Jamar? Oh, the Jamar owner's after me? The Jamar owner's... Oh, but the Jamar owner's on auto pick too, so we don't really have to worry about him. We might be able to get Burrow. Uh, Burrow, Devontae, T-Stack would be pretty crazy. I Okay, so we'll, I like Debo. I like Burrow. Those would be our top two options at our pick. Um, who else could we grab? San Francisco is Seattle, Arizona. We could even get a D hop. And then like, if he gets traded somewhere big, then that'd be huge for us. Um, could get a D hop Cincinnati. They're going to be playing against AFC North teams. Um, Ooh, maybe get like a Joe, Mi right, bro just went, maybe get like a Joe Mixon to stack with T Higgins. Cause I a big fan of Joe Mixon. Um, Joe Mixon down at 67.5. That's crazy, crazy, crazy stuff down there. Crazy stuff. Okay, let's go. You take A. Rich, Jameer Gibbs. Uh, oh, geez. All right, looks like I got Jackson, Smith, and Jigba in this draft room. Uh, let me let me take this pick first, though. Uh, okay, they both went. Debo and Burrow both got taken. That's a little bit upsetting. I really wanted Debo Samuel on this team, but that's okay. Um, McCaffrey, Kenneth Walker is a little bit... Or he just got taken. Um, Philly, Cincinnati. Philly, Cincinnati. Honestly, for like the San Francisco stacks, like we could grab like a D-hop here. D Hop two years ago wasn't that good either. Why is D Hop going so high? Probably just because he's like. Uh, D Hop is a tough bet up here. But he was a stud in the games that he played in last year. Let me, let me look at D Hop. On like a per game basis, was D Hop up there with the best of them? D-Hop was uh, 9.7. Oh, this is for standard. 
for half. D hop was where? Oh, no, doing on this one. D hop was all the way up here. Oh, D hop just got taken. Okay. Uh, this is a tough range to be in. Probably going to want to take Drake London here just because I'm a Drake London fan. Um, Drake London in the fourth round. He's one of those second year players that should see a pretty big boost. Um, I was thinking about maybe going like a Terry McLaurin uh, to pair with Devontae Smith, but uh, opted to go with Drake London just because Drake London is the alpha wide receiver in that Atlanta room. Um, and I love me some Drake London. We'll also take Jackson Smith and Jigbo over here. Show it for all you guys. Okay, now when it falls back to us, wow. Let's get Kittle. Let's get Kittle. Stack him with McCaffrey, and then we'll get Trey Lance later in the draft. Ooh, spicy. Love me some Kittle. What was Kittle two years ago? Tight end four. Nice. Yeah, Kittle, Kittle is freaking good. Kittle is one of those elite guys. Um, so we'll stack Kittle and McCaffrey. Let's go. Trades are too hard to come by in this league. That's why I couldn't take AR. Um, maybe AR, maybe Richardson's going to be good. Um, yeah, I went CJ Stroud. But, okay, in our rookie draft, yeah, so our rookie draft, we took CJ Stroud and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, I like it. I like it. Back to this. We can close this out now. Um, okay. So I know Terry was still there, but I like I like Kittle. Kittle is going to be a beast this year. Uh, San Francisco is going to be beastly. I'm going to target Trey Lance later in the draft, um, and then this is this is going to shake out pretty interesting because Trevor just went. So all the elite quarterbacks have already been taken. I think I'm going to have to uh, change my strategy for these next uh, few drafts because I'm, I'm I'm starting to let quarterbacks fall. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm letting quarterbacks go past me, um, and I probably shouldn't be doing that, but we'll see how it plays out. Mm, Addison's rising. I think 59, ADP 76.2. That's crazy. We'll see how it shakes out. Had to take Stroud. He's a uh, he. We loved him on the pod. Okay. Oh, we're almost back up. Ooh, Ayuk. Oh, did Mexican taken? I don't see Mixon. No, Mixon got taken. Where's Mixon? Oh, he's no, he's still on the board. Ooh, ooh, who do I take? Oh, I like Mixon. Well, I think Ayuk is the priority here to just keep getting the San Francisco players and just have, like, supreme San Francisco stacks. Um, get Ayuk in back-to-back drafts. Let's go. Love me some Brandon Ayuk. Let's go. And then hopefully Joe Mixon falls back to us, and if he doesn't, we could probably go, like, a Tyler Lockett. Love me some Cam Akers. Ooh. All right. Ayuk Akers is the pick. Oh, let's go. Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. Let's go. Let's go. Trades are just too hard. Very rich.
Okay. Um, I'm loving this team. If Mixon or Akers falls to us, we'll take one of them. If both of them get taken, we will take Tyler Lockett. Um, and Mixon just got taken. Please don't take Akers. And I will take Akers and then go LA Rams stacks for the win. Give me Akers. Give me Akers. Akers get taken. We will go Lockett. Uh, actually, if Akers gets taken, we will go Hollywood because Hollywood is viable as a fifth, as a San Francisco, Arizona game stack. But I like Akers here if he falls to me because Akers should be the bell cow in Los Angeles. Sean McVay loves him and he's just going to give him the ball. Give me Akers. Sweet. I'm loving this team. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm loving this team. CMC, Akers, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. Um, our quarterback room is going to be a little shaky, but I think we can fill it out with like a Trey Lance. We could even go like a naked Kyler Murray, uh, get Matthew Stafford, uh, maybe even like a Desmond Ritter like late in the draft to pair with Drake London. Um, so I'm liking. I'm liking what, what we're what we're building out so far. We've got a solid solid squad. Um, even if like a James Conner falls, we're 15 picks away, so he probably won't fall. Um, but I love it. I'm loving it. Uh... Yes, yeah, Rohan, what is he about to do here? About to do here, Rohan. Boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom. I'm up in 11. Hopefully, Hollywood's not going to fall. Hollywood or James Conner would be ideal, but I don't think he even falls to me. I like Quentin Johnston a lot down here. Um, could even take like a JMO. Well, we're going for Rams players. Who? My 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 guy late in the draft for sure is going to be Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua is my week eight or uh, my round eighteen pick. Just to for the L.A. Rams San Francisco week seventeen game. Whoo! That's going to be a. Uh, just wait for the Puka Nakua ascension. He's coming. He's coming. Puka Nakua. He went fifth round, sixth round, round five. Puka Nakua is that boy. 62190 from Utah. Hollywood just went. All right, if James Conner falls to us, we will take James Conner. We'll probably go like a James Conner, Quentin Johnston here at our next pick. Because uh, we can have a naked QJ just because he's he's built like that. He's like that. And I love me my first round receivers down here. Where's Kyler going? Could have a naked Kyler Murray. QB 19, yeah, I could... I'd be all over that. Ah, Connor just went. All right, we could go naked QJ. Philly, Cincy, Atlanta, San Francisco. Ah, oh, QJ just got taken. That hurts. That hurt so much. Uh, James Cook in Buffalo. Yeah, I'll probably take a James Cook here uh, just because Buffalo said he's probably going to be the guy. Uh, he's definitely going to be the pass catcher uh, out of him and Damian Harris. Uh, we'll take James Cook right there. And then we're probably going to go receiver. We could go... Uh, we have T. We could go Zay Flowers here. I like Zay Flowers, uh, first round wide receiver. Um, could even go J Mo because I could see Detroit playing who's the Niners. Niners twenty twenty three opponents. Oh, they're playing the Eagles. Oh, that Devontae Smith game is gonna be beautiful. Four Niners home opponents. 
Rams, Cardinals, Seahawks, Boys, Giants, Ravens, Bengals, Bucks. Road opponents, Rams, Cardinals, Seahawks, Eagles, Commanders, Browns, Steelers, Vikings, Jags. Uh, did they say Ravens? They do play the Ravens. Ooh, we could play Zay Flowers. They don't play the Lions, right? They don't play the Lions. All right, Ravens, Zay Flowers, give them to me. Zay Flowers, let's go. Because they play the Ravens. I don't know what week. Maybe it's going to be week 17. You never know. You never know. But I didn't see Atlanta on here. Hey, they don't play Atlanta, but they play the Eagles. So that Devontae Smith potential is huge. They play the Bengals too, right? They play the Bengals too. Oh, T. Higgins. Oh, my God. This is shaping up beautifully for – all right, this is my San Francisco my, – my San Francisco squad. Um, we're going to go – with just teams that play San Francisco. They play Green Bay? They do not play Green Bay. Yep, yep, yep. I like what they're building in Houston. In Houston and in Seattle. Okay. If JMO falls to us, we'll definitely take JMO just because the upside he possesses is insane. Uh, they don't play Green Bay, so we can kind of fade that. Uh, just took James Cook just because why not? That Buffalo offense should be potent. Very, very potent. Uh, they play Cleveland too, right? Cleveland Browns. They do play Cleveland. Could even go a Cleve. So they play they play the AFC North and they play the NFC East. Yeah. AFC North, NFC East. Um wow. That just worked out perfectly. Worked out perfectly. AFC North, NFC East, NFC East, NFC East, AFC North. And then who are those the two just straggler teams? They play the Vikings and the Jags. All right, let's see how this room continues to shake out for us. Um, I'm liking what our build is so far. So far, just a quick recap. We don't have any quarterbacks yet, um, which is a little bit worrisome, but we're, th that was the strategy all, all, all along. Uh, we're probably going to go for like a Kyler, a uh, Trey Lance. We're going to go for a Matthew Stafford. So this will be interesting, guys. This will be very, very interesting. Um. Hopefully, this strategy doesn't come to bite us in the butt. It definitely could, but we are hopeful. We are hopeful. Uh, could go Gibson. I'm, I, 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 you, you guys know me. I'm always a huge Gibson fan. So, could go Gibson here at 118. Where does Gibson get taken at? 130? Uh, I could wait on Gibson at 123 and go. Ooh, and Joku is sliding. Pat Frymuth is sliding too. No, I don't. I don't need a tight end right here. Probably gonna go receiver. So probably Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is just—he's Mister Consistent, and he can pop off every now and then. So let's go Tyler Boyd. Stack him with T Higgins. And then at eleven three, we probably go Kyler. Uh, Kyler or Gibson? Just because of the potential for the Arizona-San Francisco Week 17 matchup, I think we go, and we don't have any Washington players. We're going to have plenty of Gibson this offseason. I think we go Kyler in this team. Um, and then we can build out the rest of the roster. So we could go like Kyler, Lance, um, and Matthew Stafford in our next three picks. And just go quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. And then we should be good at that position for a little bit. Or we should be good for the, at that position for this draft. So hopefully, hopefully Kyler is here. He should be. There's no crazy time over here. And then we're probably going to want to just like start building out the running back room with just high upside guys. But we need the quarterbacks first. 
just because we have McCaffrey. He's going to be our RB1 home, hopefully every single week. But we're, bet- we're betting like we're right. We're betting like we're right. And then we're going to get the Puka Nakua <laughs> for the uniqueness. Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Let's go. I don't know when Kyler's coming back. It's a gamble for sure. But um, if they start announcing that Kyler's going to be back in like, what, by week seven, by week eight, he's going to shoot up to like the eighth round about where Deshaun went last year. Actually, no, Deshaun was later. That was pre-speculation. Uh, sorry. Um, I'd expect him to have like about a three-round boost if, if they say he's coming back by like week seven. And that's kind of what I expect. I, I think he's going to be out for the first six weeks. And they're going to slowly ease him in. And then by the end of the season, now week 17, San Francisco versus Arizona matchup happens. Oh, we're going to be fire. We going to be fire. But we do need Trey Lance to hold us down at the beginning of the season. If, if, if Trey Lance is announced as a starter, he immediately just shoots way, way up there. Way, way up there. Way, way up there. Uh, so this is pick 142 that it would be at. Uh, 158, where's my next pick? 166, is that where Stafford goes? Stafford goes 160. I think just for the sake of this team, we'd probably have to go. If Gibson falls to 142, I think we need to go Gibson. But if he doesn't, then we probably go Lance Stafford. I'm I'm loving the build of this team so far, though. This is a crazy, crazy good team. Um Whew. spicy loving loving this loving this loving this a lot um best ball mania this is this the winner guys i don't know is this the winner we'll see we'll see the niners are gonna be good we know the niners are gonna be good we know niners are gonna be good we know phil we know smith's gonna get his t higgins gonna get his Drake London might be a little sparse on the touchdowns, but uh, he gonna get his too. Ayuk, oh god, Ayuk's a beast. Can't believe Ayuk is still being priced this far down, just because like he went off last year. He was what like wide receiver fourteen, had like a thousand yards and nine touchdowns. And if Trey Lance is a starter, Trey Lance loves him some Brandon Ayuk. So. We're going high upside swings on these last two picks. We're going Trey Lance, Matthew Stafford. I know we're reaching down the board a little bit. We are reaching like a full round on these guys, but um, I think for this specific build, it's okay. I think for this specific build, it is okay. And it's all about ending line ADP value. And Trey Lance is a guy that I don't expect to fall any further than this like uh, I, i'm taking him at 142 his adp is 158 so i'm i'm definitely reaching but um the ending adp value might be there if trey lance is announced as the starter this ending AB, adp value is going to be crazy um stafford it might be around this range but i'm fine taking Stafford in the 13th round I don't, i'm not going to take any of these guys over having stafford and having this arizona san francisco la ram stack um because that's that's what we've said from the beginning we're going to do. And here we are doing it. So when drafts fall out exactly how you plan, you got to love it. You got to love it. You got to love it. And then we're just going to hammer running backs because we already have six um, six pretty elite guys. And then we're going to get Nakua as our last receiver. Nakua as our last receiver just purely for that upside play. That's week 17 spike week. He's going to be the guy that's going to be like, chugging along zero 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 every single week for like the first like 12 weeks and then week 17 boom he's gone puka nakua he gonna do it i also like a dpj down here but we don't have any cleveland players because don't need any cleveland players for this team doesn't fit on other teams we'll have some cleveland players just because cleveland's Going to be good this year, most likely. Um, but not on this team. This team is a AFC, or sorry, an NFC West sort of team without the Seahawks. We do have some Seahawks builds, but um, we're not focused on the Seahawks builds for this draft. But Stafford and Lance should be able to hold up the draft, the this team enough 
before Kyler comes back. But, okay, this is when we got to start focusing on the running back room. Um, guys, which I will be targeting, let's see, Rams, San Francisco, Arizona. Um, who's Arizona's backup running back? Who is their backup running back? Is it that Keontae Ingram kid? Yeah, it is Keontae Ingram. Uh, Keontae Ingram is a little bit interesting. Maybe we could even take a Keontae Ingram as our last running back for some more uniqueness. Um, I'm liking I'm liking the way this team is building out so far, though. Also surprised that Arizona didn't take any running backs in the draft. Uh, we've talked about Lenny. We love Lenny. Even like some Chuba Hubbard. Uh, for potential 49ers Week 17 game stacks, we could also focus on the NFC East. So, like we said, it's the NFC, the NFC East, the AFC North, uh, and obviously the NFC West. So, we will see who falls to us. We're going to want to take one of those running backs. But okay, this is this this draft room is falling out perfectly for us. I'm, I'm loving what we're doing. But actually, one thing I noticed, it's rare for the elite tight end to work out without an elite quarterback. Um, so we might want to kind of modify the way that we're drafting these uh, these teams moving forward. But I do like the build of this team. Uh, the build of this team is very, very uh, interesting, and it should it should be able to put up a lot of points uh, with these with these three quarterbacks. But we're six picks away. Um, Algier, don't love Algier right here. DPJ, DJ Chark, Dawson Knox, Taysom Hill, Tyler. Ooh, Tyler Higby is an interesting one. Actually, if it falls to us, I think I'll take Tyler Higby for a Kittle Higby stack. Uh, sorry, a Stafford Higby stack, especially with Higby probably going to be the second option in that Rams uh, receiving room. So if Higby falls to us, we'll, we'll, we'll take Higby. Or as my my friend Mick likes to call him, uh, Thigby. 14th round, Tyler Higby. I would like that. And then we could get like a 15th round Kenny Gainwell, maybe like a Leonard Fournette. Could even go like a Chubba Bubba. Gus Edwards even maybe. Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford's an interesting one. Cordero the Barrel. Started off the, the, the episode talking about Cordero the Barrel, but ah, oh, Thigby just got taken. Tyler Thigby. Poop. These running backs are kind of kind of very bad down here um i probably should not have waited this long to draft my next few running backs but i wonder how much algier is used just because algier put up so many points last year um but he slid pretty pretty far down the draft board um shoot give me tank bigsby um, I'm a fan of Tank Bigsby uh, on the podcast, on the Unending Rebuild podcast. Go follow us along at the Unending Rebuild podcast. We're both on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. Um, but we talked about Tank Bigsby a lot. And Tank Bigsby is a good player. Uh, comped him to a Jamal Williams type player. Um, and he lands into a Jacksonville backfield that has been needing a second running back. Uh, and I think Tank Bigsby is kind of that thunder to the Travis Etienne Lightning. Um, so... Uh, we know Jacksonville plays San Francisco sometime this season, so maybe Tank Bigsby gets in there if Etienne gets hurt. So uh, he's a nice option for us down there, especially for a rookie running back. I'm I'm liking the the Tank Bigsby potential. Um, fifteenth round, probably go another running back. I've seen a little bit about Jalen Warren. He's a good pass catcher. Don't love Najee, so screw it. Give, give us Jalen Warren. Um, I've heard a lot about him. It seems like Mike Tomlin really likes the kid. Uh, we know Pittsburgh plays San Francisco this sometime this year. So we will take Jalen Warren um, as a potential riser, 
potential ADP riser. I think Bigsby and Warren are both potential ADP risers um, just because of their, uh, they both have solid pass catching abilities. Um, so that's what we're looking for. All five of our running backs have solid pass catching abilities. And obviously Christian McCaffrey just is just an elite, elite pass catcher. Um, but because we're kind of filling out the back end of our running back room with kind of uh, mid tier sort of or low tier sort of players, we might even add like a Kenneth Gainwell, who's another pass catcher. Um, we'll see how the, how the how the room shakes out to us. But uh, we're obviously going to go Nakua in the last round. But let's see. We're going to be in the 16th. So we have three more picks in this draft. Um, we need another tight end. But I think we're going to go the Arizona tight end, either McBride or Ertz, probably McBride. Um, actually, I like Rondale Moore, too. If Rondale Moore falls to us, we're 12 picks away. I don't think he will, but... Rondale would be nice to have. Oh, we could even go like another Lenny because Lenny just is uh, like like we said previously. Lenny is going to be a guy. He's gonna he's gonna sign somewhere. Could go Rondale, Curtis Samuel, Lenny. Um, honestly, even Chuba, Van Jefferson, more LA Ram stack. A Van Jefferson would be interesting. Uh, we don't want Cam Akers backup. That limits our upside. Michael Carter, Robert Woods, Isaiah Likely. Oh, a Jerome Ford. Do we have any Cleveland players? I like Jerome Ford. If Nick Chubb goes down, Jerome Ford is huge, huge winner. What's the news on Zach Ertz? So on the depth chart, it has Zach Ertz as the tight end one. There's news on his injury. Uh, went down in week 10 with the ACL and MCL injury. Uh, Ertz said his rehab, this has been going well. I'm excited where we are at right now. We'll reach three months post-surgery on Saturday. The goal is always to be there week one. It's an adaptable goal, which I'm put the team at risk when I'm 80%. Goal is always to be there for season opener. Brian the third is ready to go for the start. Which kind of when Murray will return. Should be the week one starter over Trey McBride. If healthy, our Murray's absolutely could be problematic for Ertz. Time will tell could act as a bridge going to Murray's back. They sign a high upside back. Like Ertz could be in a decent range. So it would be lower. Okay. Um, don't love that. But, okay, we're on the clock. Who is available? Who's at the top? Oh, Rondell made it to us. Let's go. Rondell Moore. For sure, for sure. Uh... All right, we're at three, five, seven, one right now. We're at, we have two more picks left, so we're gonna go tight end, so we can go Nakua with our last pick. Maybe we don't need to go Nakua in anymore. What tight end do we want to pair with Kittle? McBride. McBride, I mean, Tyler Higby is... Oh, I wish we got Tyler Higby. That's okay, though. Uh, we'll probably go McBride just because there's a lot of uncertainty around Zach Ertz. Um, and then we'll be able to go Nakua in our last pick. Puka Nakua. That's just for the... Okay, so that was the last thing. Uh, I think I talked about it already, but the uniqueness. Um, everybody's going to have Van Jefferson. There's going to be a lot of Van Jeffersons out there. But Nakua, Puka Nakua. I doubt there's going to be too many teams that have Puka Nakua on their team. Um, so I would like to have some Puka Nakua on my team. Okay. Trey McBride, the week one starter for the Arizona Cardinals, most likely. So McBride, Kittle, um, and then we are going to draft us probably a Puka Nakua. Um, I wish I drafted one more running back instead of maybe... Oh, no, I like these receivers. Five, set, three, five, seven, two. Yeah, I think I'm going to go... 
I think Nakua. Okay. I think we're going to want to get Puka Nakua. Because uh, the only running back I'd probably take is like Chuba, maybe. Uh, San Francisco, LA Rams, Arizona. Or, or I'd take Keontae Ingram. So those are the two guys I'm gonna take. If I'm if I'm gonna go running back, I'll go Ingram. If I'm going receiver, I'll go Nakua. Uh, Devontae T, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Zay Flowers, Tyler Boyd, Rondale Moore, Christian McCaffrey, Cam Akers, James Cook, Tank Bigsby, Jalen Warren. So basically, McCaffrey's gonna be sliding in every week, and then it should be one of these four guys, most likely Akers or Cook. Um, but Bigsby and Warren could see some solid work uh, to spell either of their starters. All right, we'll go Nakua or Ingram, though. How far down are they on here? So they're both 215 plus. I right, count to Ingram right here. All right, hopefully not too many. All right, so hopefully not too many people are drafting those dudes. What's, like, the furthest down we can go? Who's the last player down here? Oh, these dudes aren't even on teams. I've never even heard of any of these guys. They go white side. JJ, they go white side. Uh, okay. Who do you guys think I should take? Nakua or Ingram? We're asking the boys. See, see who they think. I said Puka at the beginning. I've been saying Puka. The, fuck it. I'm, I'm going Puka Nakua. Um, I don't care what they say. Puka Nakua. Give them to me. Take it. Take it to the moon, Puka. There's a little hype. Puka Nakua. Oh, oh, he's fast. He's kind of big too. Oh, nice catch. Oh, okay, Puka. Okay, Puka. I wish I had scouted Puka uh, for the podcast. He looks pretty good. Oh, he's not open. Good catch, though. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I like that burst. What was his combine? I right, know we took Puka. Let's go. Did not run. Four five seven. Oh, that's not great. Whatever. Give us Puka Nakua. All right, we're getting Puka. Let's go, Puka Nakua. That's our team. Um, I will uh, list all the players out for you guys. So our quarterbacks are Kyler Murray, Trey Lance, Matthew Stafford. Running backs: Christian McCaffrey, Cam Akers, James Cook, Tank Bigsby, Jalen Warren. Wide receivers, Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, Zay Flowers, Tyler Boyd, Rondell Moore, league winner, Puka Nakua, and our tight ends, George Kittle and Trey McBride. Um, this is a solid, solid team. Liking this build. Uh, and that should do it. Oh, this guy took Sean Tucker. I like that. I like that pick. Um, okay. Conte Ingram is the other one, but we'll probably have a little bit of Conte Ingram in on some of our other builds uh, since he's not being drafted. But there is our third best ball mania draft. Um, that should do it, though. Let's see. Let's name this uh, San Francisco plus LA Ram Week 17.
Uh, this is a three five eight two build. San Francisco plus LA Ram week seventeen. Tyler. Okay, and then this team. This was Dak, Aaron Rodgers, Jameer Gibbs, J.K. Dobbins, Zach Charbonnet, Ezekiel Elliott, Kendra Miller, Leonard Fournette, Ceedee Lamb, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Jahan Dotson, Romeo Dubs, Adam Thielen, Miko Hardman, Tyquan Thornton, Mark Andrews, Luke Shoemaker. So this is a. This is a. What is this? A three six. Seven two. Three six eight two. Three six uh two six eight two. Sorry. Two six eight two. Um, this is a Dallas New York Jet. Skinny stack. Uh, I guess we have Shoemaker. We'll call this uh, stacks. Um plus because we have Dobbins and Mark Andrews. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for joining uh, the stream today, guys. Um, really appreciate you spending your Saturday afternoon uh, watching me draft best ball teams. But as always, thank you. Uh, please like the video. Uh, please like the live stream and go ahead and subscribe to the Undroppables YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all of the new uh uh, all of the new uh, developments in the NFL, what, how we're going to change our best ball strategy throughout the offseason, um, and just stay connected. So I appreciate all you guys. Peace.